This episode of The Bald and the Beautiful is brought to you by Ritual. When it comes to the holiday season, I want to be the belle of the ball, baby. I need to be the life of every party. I need to get a kiss under the mistletoe. I need to give the best gifts. What I don't need to be bloated. Thank you, Brenda. Thank goodness our sponsor, Ritual, created Symbiotic Plus to nip that in the bud. It contains clinically studied prebiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome. Symbiotic Plus is my little secret weapon for gastrointestinal troubles. It comes in a discreet bottle that doesn't even need to be refrigerated, so I can bring it with me when I travel. And you know what? I know that I'm covered. So join me and take control of your gut health this holiday season because Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide, your insides. There's no more shame in your gut game. That's why Ritual is offering our listeners 30% off during your first month. Visit ritual.com slash bald to start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. Visit ritual.com slash B-A-L-D to start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make cooking fun. I gotta tell you, I love cooking. And for me, half the battle is getting those ingredients. When it all shows up to your house and it's pre-portioned and there's a recipe and you know that it's gonna take like 30 minutes tops, 40 minutes if you're like, you know, messing around and like taking your time. It's so fun to cook when all the boring stuff is done. That's why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, stress less, obsessed. Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients, everything pre-portioned. One of the best things about that too is, especially when I lived alone, you guys, no waste. Go to HelloFresh.com slash bald free and use the code bald free for free breakfast for life, baby. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life with HelloFresh.com slash bald free with code bald free. America's number one meal kit. Bro, bro. Bro, oh, 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 Your oh, arms look oh, jacked. Oh, 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 oh. You should wear women's dresses more often. <laughs> Very boring. Could you imagine in drag you wearing a dress like this with these arms? Feel the, you, you, the tattoo is obscured, but feel the tricep. I want you to feel the tricep. This is, oh, I can see it. That's yeah. crazy. Oh, there ain't no, oh. <coughs> <coughs> So uh, my health has never been better. <laughs> I had to do something, I had to do something yesterday that was crazy. Wait, wait we come to this place for, for, <laughs> not for not for throat health. Yeah, if you guys, if, welcome to the pod. If you're watching on the video, this person has on a dress by our friend at fashion brand company, Penelope. Penelope, are you cruising towards fashion? <laughs> I did a, some collabs with, I did some collabs with them. They are a great company. Girl, why Very was, cool fashion. I mean, well, oh, oh, it's the, mm, so I had a little bit of sickness and I'm giving the exorcist voice. Your mother's in here, Karis. Care to leave her a message? I'll see if she gets it. I still need to watch that shit. You do. Um, ask me um, if I would enjoy that. Would you enjoy that? Intensely. It's good, right? Or well, you didn't watch it. I didn't watch it. Mark, have you seen it? No. Fucking, fucking useless crowd over here. God damn it. What's thou like to live deliciously? What's thou like to enjoy the music of Brinty Spurs? Well, thank you. Yeah. Would thou be able to work it, hunty? We got a lot of drinks in the pod today. Oh, yeah, we got wait, wait. water so options, let's, coffee, let's, let's talk tea. About, um, but we are not, and, and uh, funny enough, not sponsored by any of these beverage companies. However, I would like to just take a, a teeny tiny little moment out of your time to bring your attention to this little can. Hi there. Um, but uh, this is called Colexo, and it sounds like a cocktail and a drug name. It sounds like a weight loss drug. No, no, no. It sounds like um, Zyprexa or Lexapro and Calypso. It sounds like a cocktail that is also a prescription drug, doesn't it? Doesn't it? I think it sounds like a weight loss pre prescription drug. Just agree with me, Trixie. Okay, it does. <laughs> <laughs> um, so <clears throat> it's a sparkling hemp beverage actually created by a person that I've known for, mm, I think it's been 20 to, since 2006. I know this person, Mama. I know her. She's got two first names. Who is it? Brandon Andrew. Oh, cool. Um, but uh, so he's amazing. And um, he has a weird eye thing where he's got like one crazy eye. 
Like okay. a, it's like um he's got to get some bizarre weird thing going on, and it's like he's like almost half blind. That has nothing to do with his ability to make a beverage. I'll tell you that because this thing is so light, crisp, refreshing. There's a non-alcoholic version that I tried it when I had a gathering over. Um, this is I, an alcoholic, babe. No, no, no. I'm sorry. A non-hemp, a non-hemp, like non-THC infused mm. version, a, a completely virgin, no THC version that I thought had THC in it. And I sure did twirl myself into a placebo little um, merry-go-round. You were, oh, la- you were I, Lady I said, Gaga. I said, does anybody ever get high off the non-weed drinks? And Kristen Dunst so was amazing. in my house and she said, she left. No, she was stuck on one of those rubber things. She was like, na 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 na, and she flew out of your fucking go home. home. So what? You, you are a that liar. Song, that song makes me think of every drag queen walking around in a leather jacket with a short Not pink leather. Wig. Excuse your mouth. Pink leather jacket. Thank you. And and and, and, and uh, those clear glasses with the pink bus driver wig with the pink and blonde bus driver wig where you can see the black hairs of the nape of their neck poking through because it's and then in, in the tracks and they're, they're going like this yeah rock and roll and i'm in the corner throwing up puking my guts out in perfect whore drag i just wouldn't choose that look for my pink look if i had to choose one no if i had you to know? choose a pink song i'd probably just uh, be a paralegal but anyways, back to Colexo. I just want to say, try it. I don't know. It's not available now, but I have tried it. And if you know anything about me as a consumer of um, things that, you know, are, uh, uh, let's say, recreational drugs, you know that moderation is the name of my game. You know that I'm a trusted source when it comes to not going over the limit. Mm-hmm. And you know that I would never do anything to hurt my or anybody else's health. <laughs> I will say when it comes to um, psychoactive ingredients, you are been there, done that. Yeah. Uh, there are clientele on my next shirt. If you know well, what you I mean. You know like those commercials where it's like Michael Jordan biting into a hot dog and then he spits it out? Yeah. You don't spit out. Mom, I don't dog. spit out. I swallow, honey. And I digest and I talk about it on my blog like Carrie Bradshaw. Do I you couldn't like help hot, but wonder. Do you, do you like hot dogs? Do hot dogs taste any good? It depends on. Do you what. like hot dogs? Does anyone like hot? You know what? That's yeah, they a lie. Do. The people love I hot know dogs. They, do. they love hot. They go through hell eating hot dogs. It's it's the part of a ball. Take me out to the ball game. Put a hot dog up my butt. I would much rather have. I mean, a brat like something that's not a brat hot dog. Burst? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. hot dog. Well, I go straight to like buttholes and eyelids. Well, because that's what you're chomping on, Miss Chomp Chomp. That holds an eyelid. It's the, it's the, um, the, the, um, if they're like, okay, so we have this huge pile of shit after we've made all the fun meat. What should we do with it? Oh, I know. Let's take that fucking intestine or something else. Maybe it's rectum. Fill it up with a bunch of shit, put a bunch of chemicals in it, and then sell it to a bunch of people. Buttholes and eyelids. Buttholes and eyelids. Let's bedrooms and broomsticks. I got to tell you what I did yesterday. Uh, This week, I got a call from our friends at Jimmy Kimmel, and they said, you want to come down and do this little skit? Our friends? Our friends. Your friend. My friend. Thank you. And they said, you want to do this little skit? I said, sure, what is it? And they had me come in and read to children. And I said. Groomer. Groom squad. I said, Groom stop. Squad. Hammer time. And then they said, well, it's a comedy skit about drag queens reading to children where you're going to read them Ted Cruz's new book. And I said, now I'm interested. Hello. Now it's on cruise control, bitch. Yeah. Because his new book is called Unwoke. And it's about Marxism in America. It was so... And on the cover, he looks so serious. He looks so serious. And so I go in. Excuse your mouth. He looks so what? He's obviously. Um, seriously ugly. He's not my seriously favorite person. Bu- um, did you know that people think he's the Zodiac killer, by the way? T- yes, it's funny. It's, it's a meme. It's, it's fierce. Like, so in every comment of anything, he's like, so you're the Zodiac killer, huh? Or like, it's, it's so funny. It's pretty amazing. Trolls Tina. And so I go in and there's kids, real kids. And I go in and I sit and I really have to read to them. And they're, they're real kids. Ew. And Ew. I, kids, man. They're disgusting. What do they want? Mama, they, anything and everything. They're horrible. These kids they're were horrible. All professional TV kids. Oh, were the worst kind ever. So they all looked, they looked like, like they were all about to do a toothpaste commercial. Like they, <laughs> no, they all had like perfect kid hair, kid teeth. It was evil. like if the you. The essence of pure evil, no, Mary. No, it was like if you, if you stock imaged no children. Boogers, no boogers, no braces. Yeah, they like, all have like, like, they all have like bright sparkling eyes, rosy cheeks, good personalities. Children like, okay. of the corn. But no, no. I was like, this is best of the best kids. Because I wasn't like this. Oh. Dirty, uninteresting. Were, like A child. Gay. Yeah. A child. <laughs> These kids were like professional children. Children, children stock, it's like, um. If you sent away for a child in a magazine, this would be what what showed up. This is what came up from hell. 
Yeah, yes. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. But being mean. in drag with children, it did make me think of real, real, real drag queens who desire to go read to children. What's going on there? You are. I, you know what I think of? I think of two things. I think of you're mentally ill and or you have to do damage control. You're you're like, or or the probably more realistic one is that you are a good person who wants to do something nice for, for, for humanity and in the least harmful way. But mama, why then? Why are you doing drag? Well, I, the thing is, <laughs> like, hey, why are you doing drag, mama? Why are you doing drag? Because well, that's like, what the fuck? Go be a priest or a politician or something. Well, I didn't start doing drag oh. to hang out with straight people, let alone children. Tell them, tell them again. I don't think they heard it. I didn't start <laughs> drag to hang out with straight people, let alone their children. Say it three times. Children? <laughs> Children? 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 What are you nuts? What are you nuts? <laughs> but luckily it was like satirizing reading to children. Yes. So it was like, okay, making fun of reading to yeah. children, that I will do. And then you took a flame torch and you just lit them all on fire at the end, I hope. But then I had to sit there and read from this book. I had to read them sections about like the little mermaid being woke because she's black. And the kids were like, Ariel must be white. But even the kids were like, I'm like, uh huh. They're like, that seems racist. I'm like, <laughs> you're kidding me. Are you serious? They're like six, seven years old. They're Mama, like, that seems work racist. It out. I was like, get her wig. Get Miss Cruz's wig. All right, six year old. Get her wig. Where's her wig and at? And on the cover of the book, he looks like um, a fucking. It looks idiot. like a flyer for like, are you depressed? It's like dark contrast Is lighting. It? And I'm like, kids, does he look fun? And Girl, they're like, he's so ugly. They, even the kids were like, he doesn't look happy. Mama, he's so ugly. How could you be happy when you're spitting out so much evil stupidity all day? Ugly's fine because ugly people can still smile and be and be good people. Mama. Ugly shouldn't stop you from living a full life. Look at us. Thank you, troll. T uh, uh, I, I, the troll troll trolls that I take. Too. Mama, troll troll two. Uh, troll trilogy. I'm the fourth troll part of Central the troll Park. trilogy. How's that? I'm the fourth installment of the troll trilogy. Do that math. Troll four. Yeah. The the one that yeah you you didn't ask for more, but here we go. Yeah. The no that I, that's another thing I want to talk about with the um hot people, and I have no time for them. Like I like I've had it. Those ladies um. I've had it with um, hot people who think they're funny. I know we talked about this before. Oh, it's, it's like it's, oh, 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 oh. I'm, I'm gonna get the Miami Sound Machine fired you know up hate, to back you, me yeah, up with this. You know what I hate more than <clears throat> you know what I hate more than uh, airline food. I hate when you walk into a room and <clears throat> everyone loves you. Yeah, like okay, so like, this is crazy. This is crazy. So like, okay, I know. Okay, it's like, like we both know that so I'm super hot. So I asked hot. him out, and of course he said yes. I'm like. Fuck, that's so crazy because like, what do I do then? I know you probably, probably don't know because you're all ugly, but I'm hot and it's weird. Ooh, uh. So like, that's their stand up. And I'm like, but don't worry. I, ca I actually got hot overnight and I don't even know what to do with it. We don't know what to do. <laughs> so but, if you, but when you are hot, what are you doing? Get out of here. Go be a model. Go do anything <sighs> else. Hostess at a, ho at a fancy hotel. Get the fuck off that comedy stage. And Mary, pay the troll toll. Um, the rare, rare cases, I would say, Amy Sedaris, that bitch is fucking stunning. She's not on the cover of a magazine, but she, she goes. Often but plays. she goes out of her mama, way to not be stunning. She goes, mama. She goes over the rainbow She's like, and around I, the hi, corner. Quick question: Can I get a blacked out front also, tooth? Also, where right. are my brown teeth? Why yeah. are my teeth brown? Where are my brown teeth, Jane? Jane, Jane. Jane. <laughs> where are my brown teeth? <laughs> yeah. Why am I wearing a wig that looks like a witch's broom? Why? Yeah. And then she'll st she'll pivot and then, but she does. This woman is also like other uh, rare. She's so gorgeous. She really to me. is. But amazing. she's also she's also just a. She's one of the funniest women on earth. But also, the but, thing but, 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 is, but she's not, she's probably four two and, and she's like, she's a tiny little thing. She is, is a very attractive woman, but it's, it's a rare blend, but she's not a supermodel. Fat, me. broke, <laughs> nasty, <laughs> uh, career, career in shambles. shambles. She came on this she track, track, mad, mad as hell. <laughs> <laughs> career in Woo! shambles she came that, on this bitch mad, mad as, as hell. hell that nasty broke career in, in shambles. shambles at an all-time low christina came on this track mad, mad as, as hell, hell. <laughs> this episode of the bald and the beautiful is brought to you by ritual when it comes to the holiday season i want to be the bell of the ball baby I need to be the life of every party. I need to get a kiss under the mistletoe. I need to give the best gifts. What I don't need to be bloated. Thank you, Brenda. Thank goodness our sponsor, Ritual, created Symbiotic Plus to nip that in the bud. It contains clinically studied prebiotics, probiotics, and a postbiotic to support a balanced gut microbiome. Here's the deal. Miss Symbiotic Plus is a delayed release capsule designed to help survive the harsh conditions of the upper GI tract for delivery to the colon, an ideal place for probiotics to grow and thrive. And don't forget about the postbiotic, baby. Ooh, what comes after the biotic? 
the postbiotic. She provides fuel to the cells that make up the gut lining and supports a healthy gut barrier. Okay, mama, if I'm not doing my little ritual, my little symbiotic, it's toot toot, beep beep, and not in the Donna Summer kind of way. Okay. Symbiotic Plus is my little secret weapon for gastrointestinal troubles. It comes in a discreet bottle that doesn't even need to be refrigerated, so I can bring it with me when I travel. And you know what? I know that I'm covered. Hello. And it's an all-in-one single nested minty capsule, so it was created easy to make it a part of my wellness routine. You know I don't love a lot of stuff in my bag. Okay, Miss Gwyneth Paltrow, get out of my life. So join me and take control of your gut health this holiday season because Symbiotic Plus and Ritual are here to celebrate, not hide, your insides. There's no more shame in your gut game. That's why Ritual is offering our listeners 30% off during your first month. Visit ritual.com slash bald to start Ritual or add Symbiotic Plus to your subscription today. Visit ritual.com slash B-A-L-D to start Ritual. Are you tired of talking to faceless profiles? Oh my gosh, I, I cannot feel more strongly about this. Being forthcoming with who you are, what you want, and especially what you look like, it saves time. Don't you want to be very confident that the person you're talking to is the person you're talking to? And more importantly, don't you want to be confident that when they meet you, you are exactly what you advertised? On Archer, every profile is selfie verified. All right, aim higher with Archer. No more blank profiles, no more headless torsos. It's a new dating app for gay, bisexual, and queer men that is now available nationwide. Archer is customizable with different options to view someone's profile so you can choose your own dating adventure. Plus, it's the first social first app that allows users to follow each other, tag, and more. But more importantly, Arch is all about community, safety, and building connections by just being your truer self. I can tell you from my personal experience, I have been sometimes led down a rabbit hole by not knowing exactly if someone is being honest with me on the internet. And mama, it's important. So whether you're aiming for friends, fun, or to find the one, be an archer and always hit your mark. Download and try the new Archer dating app today. So wait, at the show last night, Christina, um, um, Tina and Amy talked about- Oh, you got to tell them what- I went, Mary, I drove, ooh, let's talk talk about it. Me and Katie Delaney and her friend Nikki, Katie drove us nearly three hours to the Yamava Casino in Highland, California. Better believe, come four o'clock when I Google mapped it, I was like, Katie, abort, abort, Katie, abort. She was was willing to drive. I'm willing to go get a a degenerative disease to get out of this. Honey, I was willing to take the leg. I was going to go- you yeah. know, I was saw, yeah, saw, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do it, do it, yeah. And uh, so, but we did go, and Mary, I'm so glad that we did. That those, oh my god, it was inspiring. Like it was truly inspiring. They are the Trixie and Katya of them, and and they have a show of white that, ladies of white ladies, and they have a joke. They were they were like, who's in the crowd tonight? Da, 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 da. And then they go, but most importantly, whoa, 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 white women, and the house lights come up, and they were like, oh shit. Oh shit. Yeah. And there was like, they're like licensed realtors. They're like responsible gay dads. And there was, it was like, oh, there's one right in the middle. You yeah. got your tickets early. They killed it. They crushed it. And t- Amy at the end, when they are towards the end of the, uh, I won't give it away. I did snap a few photos, but there was a, 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 a moment where somebody in the front row was filming. Oh, they had a Fred Armisen come out to do weekend update a guest. It was electrifying. And he was filming it like this. And I didn't know until later when we talked to them backstage that Tina was like doing this, like while Fred was talking to the guy and he goes this. Who? The guy filming in the front row, six feet away from Tina. They're at the front downstage, right at the lip of the stage at the desk. Fred's doing his thing. Tina and Amy are watching at the Weekend Update desk uh, standing by. And she's she sees him filming and she goes, and he goes, <gasps> and then she goes, And he goes, and then what I didn't see that, but what I did see was Amy writes stuff down on a piece of paper and Tina, they were discussing something back and forth. I was like, what are they doing? And I thought they were like in a beef with Fred, making fun of him. I was like, ooh, they hate Fred. Ooh, they hate Fred. This is juicy tea at the gig, girl. And when you hate someone, what you do is bring them on stage with you. Well, (laughs) (laughs) Look (laughs) <laughs> Look in the mirror, bitch. <laughs> no, but like, I don't know. Maybe they were saying this is kind of like, this is kind of dragging or he's, he, he's not so, I mean, yeah, he was why killing does he look like that? Uh, yeah. Why is he bald? What's yeah, that like, smell? Yeah, yeah. Is he, yeah. Did he shit himself again? Mm-hmm. You know, whatever. Or they were just kikiing. I don't know. Maybe they're bored. Who knows? 
But I later learned that there was that it was like, what the fuck do you want me to do? You want me to cuss this motherfucker out? And did you want me to like? And they were like, it was fierce. And at the end, at the Q and A, they called him the fuck out. And security swarmed his ass, and there was a little bit of commotion up in there. Well, can I say I've been at shows where I've been at shows where someone in the front is the whole time with uh, the phone like this, with a tripod. They don't even know us. They're going to sell it on on fucking and YouTube going or like OnlyFans. This. They're going, and they're like this the whole show. And I've stopped and asked them to stop, and they keep filming while I'm asking. This them is to stop. this is what they said. I talked to Tina. She was like, "This is what he was like." He was like this. She said, "No." He said. Then I asked, "How old was he?" She's like, "Oh, in mid forties." I was like, "Was he gay?" She said, yeah, he was with a guy who told him to stop. I was like, bop. Yeah, of course. Of course he was a fucking gay guy. Of course he was a fucking entitled gay fag. But you know who's filming us? The straight girls. I don't care. So I don't know. I, I don't, don't think, care. I don't, I don't think there's a rights. blueprint. I, I don't think rights. there's a blueprint to people <laughs> I believe in filming. women's rights. I'm a, I believe in women's lib and I'm a feminist. I think everyone's <laughs> hand should be chopped off evenly. Okay, that's For fierce. filming at shows. That's but also, um, when, but when a woman... A woman in comedy, a woman of that caliber with that career and her comedy partner who's equally as fierce gets up and says, you flop, bitch. You better delete that phone because ain't nobody going to watch it. And then she made a joke. She was like, you're, yeah, yeah. You're going to gather around the family and be like, let's watch that 19 seconds of blurry footage of uh, Billy Joel at the garden. Like nobody does it. She's no. like, delete that video now because you're never going to watch it. And it's true. Well, it's like when people have... um. Their stories is all concerts. Oh, sure. One clip is fine. Mary, one I, clip is fine. I had to do La Bada because of the yellow suit. That was my pass. I was like, y'all need to know about her suit. Well, you were was, a correspondent was, live no, on the scene. I was at the United Ground Nations Zero. Um, um, Human Rights Committee. And I was I was like, Mama, we need, this is General Assembly stuff. We need to organize trial at the Hague for this suit. So this was like political stuff. That right. wasn't like, I'm sharing my little musical moment. No, that was like crimes against nature. Citizens arrest. Thank you. Thank you. Also, you know, I was like, oh, where's your passport? I need to see your papers and all that stuff. But, but yeah, nobody wants your shitty sound, horrible, blurry. Mama, they, the artist uploads it all. Like go to their page, enjoy them, May, pay them, help them out. Yeah, are you really gonna go refer to this you're footage not, later? You're not. You're not. And also, you're. I know it sounds cheesy and boomery, but you're also missing out on the lovely moment with your eyeballs in your ear holes. You know, grab someone to your right and to your left. Grab their titties, feel them, milk them, suck on them. Yeah, I don't get it. <laughs> But especially concerts when it's just like, oh my god! And you have so horrible many. seats, or you have and great seats sounds. in your like uh, your the most unflattering angle, which is why Rue won't ever perform live. You know, you want to see that bitch from underneath. It looks like the Grudge Part Five. By the way, I was going through. Speaking of SNL, I was going through a bunch of drag like uh, sketches from SNL, mm -hmm. and I am so obsessed with the designing women RuPaul one. She goes home to nothing no one. and yep. nothing. Friends, she has none. none. It, she went to Sephora on her uh, lunch, lunch break, break. Yeah. to have lashes put on top of her real oh, eyelashes. Lashes. It's so funny. It's so funny. It's so funny. And, and, and RuPaul has the, 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 the perfect. And RuPaul goes, what is yeah. your name? And she goes, I'm your supervisor. My name's Candace. <laughs> it's so, she, and because she has that, like, she's playing RuPaul, playing RuPaul, playing uh, uh, Designing Women so fiercely. It's so amazing. It's so perfectly wooden and insane. And Cecily Strong. <clears throat> Shit, this woman. <laughs> it's so funny. It's, it's so, so funny. Have fucking you also funny. seen the John Mulaney drag brunch one? Um, I have not. There's one that's drag brunch where they're like, it's one of those places where the drag queens are mean to you. It's so funny. She's going to read us. And John Mulaney's like, ooh, that smoky eye looks like a house fire. And they're like, ooh. And then it's like, girl, that print after Labor Day, blah, blah, blah. Ooh. And then she gets to this guy and she goes, when did you first know that when you enter the room, no one was happy? <laughs> it's like, it's so mean. I love that. Like, yeah. So she gives everyone at the room like two dimensional stock reads, and then this one guy, she keeps going in on him. <laughs> so you failed at everything you've ever tried to do. It's has, so why fierce. haven't you killed yourself yet? Yeah, she says something like, Has anyone ever been happy when you enter the room? Oh my god. Which is so fucking horrible. Well, I Liz, wish well, I had a job in drag <sighs> where I was ever like a server and I got to be. Oh, mean I to don't know. I hate that. I hate oh, that. I would have. Although when I did Crank Yankers, I discovered I don't have the spine no, for no, that. No, no, no spine. But this is what you want to do. You want to be like Tina Fey and write lines for Jane Krakowski that go to the tune of this. That was terrible. I'm going to be constructive here. You should kill yourself. Yeah. That is so 
fucking funny. Yeah. Jane Krakowski, gorgeous blonde Jane is like, I'm going to be constructive here. You should kill yourself. Is Jenna she the Maroney. funniest person alive? Tina Fey? Jenna Maroney? Jen, uh, um, Jane Krakowski? Yeah. She's one of the most talented. Because, she is. Mama, she's she's singer. She's a singer. Well, she she's breaks the rule of beautiful and funny. Um, she breaks the rule. Oh. Well, she's not doing stand-up, I guess. Not stand doing up. stand up. Stand up's yeah. different. Stand up's different. different. Stand up. Tina crushed her stand up set. Crushed her. She started. She crushed it. She well, was remember crushed Amy it. told us like Tina was saying, "I don't know what I'm going to say," oh, and then and, pulls out a great. Stand-up yeah, she's set. like, "I don't know about this," and she's like, "Oh, this thing that I've just been pre- preparing for like seven weeks." <laughs> you know, like, but she did this. I'm not gonna. I don't want to do that thing where I t- to give the whole show no, away. We're but, the whole show. Okay. Did no, you but, take any videos? I did. <laughs> I didn't post them though. I just did the beginning when they came out because I was just, you know, I had to just, anyways. I think that's fine. A video when they're walking out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm I didn't talking post it. filming the no, whole show. Like, no. that's crazy. No, 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 it's crazy. And also, I don't want to give anything away. I want to go, I want to love them and go see. I had no idea what they were going to do. And I was delightfully surprised the whole time. But I, I, towards the end, Amy had a joke where she, they, before the last section, she had, they pulled out a rug and two chairs and Amy was smoothing out the rug and she says, you know, it's like the, the energy was like a little lulling and she's like, oh, I just got to smooth out the, uh, the wrinkles in this rug or else someone I love is going to die. You know, it's like so, so funny. That is so funny. And then Tina Fey was like, um, her, she's one of her uh, bits was just like, you know, um, you know, I'm, I, I'm part of a sandwich generation. I'm, I, I, I'm simultaneously caring for children, uh, uh, teenagers and also elderly parents. So, you know, I, I start my morning, um, I wake up at 4 a.m., start worrying. <laughs> it's like, and it's just so like, she was so, she was brilliant. She was brilliant. So, so, so brilliant. And there, there were so many moments where I was like, fuck. It, like the weekend update was cunt. So cunty. I can bam, only imagine. Bam, bam, I, bam, bam. Those bitches fucking were, uh, fuck, they fucked it up. It was so cunt. And they're 30 years of friendship. And the whole gag was that Tina's like, we're work friends. And it was like, a, it was like, a, um, you know, like we're are celebrating this friendship that is just at work. The Mama. dynamic was so when People are like, I want a friendship parallel. like yours. I'm like, you have one. Yeah. You're a manager at Starbucks. <laughs> yeah. That's what well, they did a manager improv bit. That was, it was so far. It was, man, it was so good. I'm so, it was worth the drive and then some, and then I got to meet Tina Fey. Afterwards, Love. I got to meet her and say, but this was the gag. They did a joke called, um, they did a joke about, um, uh, oh, the, oh, who's here? Who's not here? Because we're in bumfuck California. Uh, the da da does not here because whatever. The weekend's not here because it's Wednesday. I did. That's so on, funny. How about this though? On the way, drive there to Katie Delaney's house. I text her. You know what? You know what? I, you know what's embarrassing for me? She's like, what? I think often about the fact that the weekend did not guest star as the villain on the the show Wednesday. Because it's the weekend and it's a Wednesday. But he he was the villain on. Uh, and I said he played a, rap- a rapist on the Idol. Yeah. But that's wordplay. That's funny and could have. Did you watch the Idol? I, I sure the fuck did every goddamn episode, every five fucking episodes. Do you want to get in the Idol right now, bitch? You want to take your gloves off and get in the Idol? Do you I want to take your shirt off and get in? I watched oh, it. Oh, then we can't discuss it. I watched it with David no, Silver. We can't discuss and it. And I looked then. at him like I'd. Mama. Like I just Mama. realized for the first time that Ooh, my, my, my partner of seven years could be, could be a Vic. Could be perpetrated upon by your Should rage. Should be jailed <laughs> by what he's watching on TV. <laughs> and I wake up to like, our, uh, spoiler alert, our new house has a 85 inch television. And I wake up to David Silver watching, you know, Bethany Frankel screaming at the top of her lungs at 7 a.m. Drinking his iced coffee. That's normal to me. <laughs> the idol, Mama, I was like. Sweetie, darling, talk about it. Sweetie, I don't even don't give me that look because I want I suffered through every fucking episode of that five episode. I'm not gonna call it a piece of shit. I'm not gonna call I've been it a piece watching, of shit. It watching? was a huge splashy production. I've been watching. Uh, well, I watched the new Love Is Blind season five. Okay, because you know Love Is Blind is. Well, what's she gonna Love, see? Love Is Blind is. What's she gonna open her eyes and realize she could see the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> Love Is Bland. Thank you. Um, I love that, and I'm watching. Uh, I watched a little bit of the new The Ultimatum, but that show really depresses me. You know, that show really depresses me. My, one of my favorite. Oh. My favorite, 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 favorite crim- film critic of all time. I think that she she lambasted that show so fiercely. I was I had secondhand shame and embarrassment from gushing over it when we were working for Netflix um, because she's the what only show? the uh, the ultimatum. Oh, she, I think she might have watched the whole thing, and she's a queer woman. Well, um, no, uh, the new season is not queer, but the queer season uh-huh. was insane. It was insane. It was. How ins- do we make it more dramatic? Add lesbians, bitch. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think she 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 tweeted something to the effect of. I'm not going to say what it is just in case I'm wrong, but someone tweeted something to the effect of, um, this was the, this was evil. 
<laughs> oh, the, 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 the ultimatum the queer evil. edition, and it's all lesbians. Evil, evil. evil. Well, they could evil. do gay guys because the gay guys would be like, "I'll just fuck, I'll just go with whoever." Yeah, I'll just fuck the cameraman. Actually, yeah. I'm blowing him right now. The Whoops, lesbians are like, yeah. "Well, Look. we've been dating six weeks, so she is my soulmate." Yeah. Oh no, no, we are. And um, but I met you five in, minutes ago, so you're my wife. Yeah, yeah, and it has been etched in stone by Moses. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> yeah. like, okay, what? But but do you like bow rat? Bo, um, I like to say my wife. I, I, so as a person who, who started a Russian character with a, with a funky accent, I don't care for that type of thing. Mm-hmm. I don't care for, but I do care for, oh, Mary Dugan, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, Master Antonio Thompson Dugan the third, Natasha Dimitriou from What We Do in the Shadows. I was not previously aware of her comedy career before this show. Internet nails. In Mama. Home of passion, tropical beauty. <laughs> we, we are here to make all of your beauty dreams come true. Hello, would you? Um, we offer also um, uh, wax your pussy. Take ten minutes, clean your pussy up. Yeah. Take ten <laughs> minutes, clean your pussy up. <laughs> and it's like, like on VHS. Oh, it surely is. That was good. It was, it, it, but the 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 and then the Love Island audition. Yeah. Which, by the way, is Mama. not even too unreal. My name is blah blah blah, but I would like to. I would. Uh, I would like you to know me by the name I want you to know, which is Fantastic Holiday. Today's episode is sponsored by our friends at HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make cooking fun. I got to tell you, I love cooking, and for me. Half the battle is getting those ingredients. When it all shows up to your house and it's pre-portioned and there's a recipe and you know that it's going to take like 30 minutes tops, 40 minutes if you're like, you know, messing around and like taking your time. It's so fun to cook when all the boring stuff is done. That's why HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. Whether your resolution is to save money, eat better, stress less, obsessed. I have had HelloFresh for years years and years and years. And one of my concerns going into it was as a vegetarian, I was like, I bet there's going to be one or two random options a month. Like, you know, as a vegetarian, I'm used to getting, I'm used to getting the shaft. I'm used to getting like no options. You know, your option is like a salad or some kind of Mediterranean dish or like a butternut squash soup. That's it. I have barely, barely even had the same meal twice being a vegetarian Each HelloFresh box is packed with farm fresh ingredients, everything pre-portioned. One of the best things about that too is, especially when I lived alone, you guys, no waste. Most of the recipes take me like 30 minutes, truly, usually 25, but there's also quick and easy versions that are 15 minutes. So if that's, that's good for like lunch or like if you really want to run, like you really just want to flash something in a pan and like eat dinner, there's also even like less time options. There's also great accommodations for eating habits. Like I'm a vegetarian, but there's calorie smart stuff. There's protein smart stuff. Meal delivery really changed my life. I'm such a confident cook. You guys, I'm hosting holidays at my own home this year. Family's flying to me and I'm cooking holiday dinner. A few years ago, before I started using a meal kit and like learning to cook, I would have never been able to do that. I learned to cook. There's something about the recipe, the pre-portioned ingredients. It takes all the intimidation out of it. And 30 minutes later, I have a meal cooked from scratch that I can't believe I made every time. And girl, you know I'm a breakfast hoe and so is Katya. And breakfast is the most important meal of the day. HelloFresh agrees that breakfast is important. And they're giving all subscribers free breakfast for life. That means you get totally free breakfast items with every single HelloFresh delivery. That is fierce. Now, I want to tell you guys this. Green Chef is now owned by HelloFresh. So you guys have heard me talking about Green Chef for years. HelloFresh is now, they are, they are merged as one. And so now that it's owned by HelloFresh, there's a wider array of meal plans. There's something, I mean, which is crazy. Cause like I said, when it was, when it was Green Chef, I barely ever had the same meal twice. So the options truly are going to be endless. Go to HelloFresh.com slash bald free and use the code bald free for free breakfast for life, baby. One breakfast item per box while subscription is active. That's free breakfast for life with HelloFresh.com slash bald free with code bald free. America's number one meal kit. I didn't tell you about Prom Springs Pride. You don't need to, honey. Okay. so, so <laughs> you, I, no, I but, know how that's no, going to go. We're setting up our little booth for Tracy okay. Motel. Okay. I had the distinct pleasure of being the Grand Marshal, mm. which they- which, 
You which, sent me a which, picture. Which, by the way, you they sent me said, a picture. It's customary that the Grand Marshal goes to a breakfast. That goes to a breakfast. The crowd I said, goes what mild. time is it at? They said, no, at breakfast, they said brunch. They said oh, it's, customary, it's customary that the drag the um it's customary that the grand marshal goes to a brunch and I said great I'm gay I love brunch at 11 a.m. Um, I said what time is it I said eight I said Mama, so, so eight a.m. That's is not a, a senior brunch. breakfast that's a senior's if that's breakfast brunch, is breakfast at four Mama what are we doing here that's a senior citizen's early that's a bird senior breakfast senior citizen IHOP first egg free yeah we kick you out at nine yeah. because we're, the real breakfast starts. Bring your then. own oxygen tank. Thank you. So I go there and I have, and everybody's nice, really lovely. Then I meet a bunch of um, Shh, tweakers. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> so that was fall fun, and I got to get my little honor, my little thing, and they give me a little sash. Congratulations, so by the way. Thank you. It was really fun and cool. And but the day before that, I'm helping set up for the Trixie Motel Pride booth, and we have all our merch, and people are asking us questions. And I'm taking pictures of people, and. Um, these people come over and they go, and I notice a few booths from us. The booth is Crystal Meth Anonymous, which is probably a great presence to have at Pride, not to be bleak, but it's probably good to have that at Pride, right? Plant well, the seed for some people. Uh, Plant, and I'm sure for some promotion. people, it's just a buzzkill. Um, it also, it's, I think it violates a, a tradition of that program, but that's my opinion. Well, so they're, they're just mind. handing out pamphlets, whatever. Okay, but I guess. I don't know. They come over and they come over and What'd you say? Well, well, no, they did not. Well, they I make did it, not. I make it a f- they did I'm keeping not. it light, right? They come over and they come I'm over. A, I go, I'm gonna oh. My, I'm going to hold my wig. Well, I don't know who they were. I'm hold my Three wig. of them come over to say hi, and I don't know who they were. And I go, oh, you boys must be from Crystal Meth Anonymous. And they go, we are. <laughs> and I Wait, le- what? You didn't know? I didn't recognize them. They didn't have Crystal Meth Anonymous shirts on. You just made an assumption and you were correct. Well, I thought were they, did they have pookies in the pocket? No, I just, oh. <laughs> they walked right over from that direction and I went, Oh, you boys must be in Christmas. And they went, we are. And they were so nice and cool. And I said, you know, you guys, I said, I hate to be bleak, but I'm sure you guys being present here is actually really helpful for some people. And mm-hmm. it's really cool. And they were nice and chatty. <laughs> and I just accidentally identified them. Well, so you know, it's funny because there's, I don't know about crystal meth anonymous, but I know that other AA tradi- um, uh, uh, 12 step traditions, the, the, t- one of their traditions is, uh, they, uh, it's attraction rather than promotion. They must maintain anonymity, anonymity at the level of press, radio, and films. Are they supposed to put bags in their heads? No, 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 no mama. No, they don't. They should. Don't, Could you they imagine don't do, the, the, no, the crystal meth anonymous, they have ski masks on. Can we help you? Like some kind of voice changer. From the vice documentaries. From yes, the vice yes. I do drugs in the Sinaloa cartel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. No, no I mean, I, I'm sure it doesn't violate traditions. I'm just being weird, but that is so funny. That's so funny. That's yeah. so funny. I'm, I was, I was, I was waiting for you to be like, I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Well, I kind of, they came over it. as a trio and they, I went, <laughs> oh, like, they must be I from a booth. Be like, so where's your... Friend. <laughs> well, well, they weren't from the underwear booth across me. They weren't from like, they were right around my area. And I was like, they. I did think I they must be I pictured them coming like a big there. butterfly net coming for me. Do you know what I mean? Like, you know, those big, big butterfly nets that were like hi- trying to hide it behind them. It's like, so is a uh, Katya not here? Well, I did say this. I did say this and they, they did laugh. I did say, it's really cool what you guys do. I don't have any experience yeah, being around that, there anyone. There we go. There we go. That's what I was waiting <laughs> and for. And they laughed. Of course. And they say hi. Because, they, oh, <laughs> well, I say hello because hi is triggering. <laughs> well, they said hi and I said, hi to who? It, Isn't it anonymous? It. Yes, exactly. <laughs> you better lay low. Okay. I stood up for you and then they oh said, stood God, up for who? So and I said, I'm not going to say. <laughs> Anonymy, anonymy. Although it is oh, all anonymous, so but in LA, you know how often no, somebody goes, I saw this celebrity. I oh, said, where? Mama, and they that's go, not okay. It's not. It's not people okay. say it all the time. Because this is press. This is press and it's film. Okay. This is so this is press right now. If I, it is a violation of the traditions of most uh, 12 step programs to publicize at the level of press, radio and film, because for a very, very, very important reason, because you may not, you are not allowed to be a spokesperson for an organization that is not only, I'm going to tell you this. It is not only the the only hopeful part of the American culture. People don't know this. AA was created in America. It does not the the it ha, its foundations are very shaky. Its foundations are very religious. It's very it there it's problematic all running through it. But it is the only organization that is not for profit and exists as a um as literally cleaves to its singleness of purpose, its mission statement relentlessly. And not in a mega church pretend oh way. Mama. It's no, it, the 12 traditions of it, they say 
They say, we exist only for one reason, to help alcoholics get sober and for them to help others get sober. Period, full stop, bam. They and they do it. They create service boards to, um, but they have, their donations only, one dollar. One dollar. So if you study, if, if from an outsider pers- perspective, sorry, I'm like very passionate about this, obviously, but like if you study it from an outside, non addict, non alcoholic, alcoholic perspective, this organization is is a is a fantastic, hopeful model for people helping people in America for no money, right? No money. One dollar. And by the way, actually, really helping people. Yes, but on that to that point, they don't release statistics. Because the statistics of recovery in general, not related to AA or NA or CMA, are so bleak. paralyzingly grim bleak. and depressingly bleak. The data is not good. So when I say, I, I love AA, AA got me sober, and then I go off the rails speaking French psychotic online, people say, well, AA don't work. Right. You know what I mean? Totally. And then because I've said I'm a spokesperson for AA, I'm not. Nobody is. Nobody's a spokesperson for AA. So it is inappropriate for yeah. people for people to publicly declare that I am a proud member of Alcoholics Anonymous online. It, that's inappropriate. Inappropriate. It's inappropriate I to do it on the level that. of press, radio, and films. It's inappropriate. It's a violation of their traditions and it I harms the it, organization. I thought of it just as a, a base level violation of, of their of their, pr- of their of privacy, the, of, which it is. But it also reflects poorly upon this institution that must be protected. Because what if I was an addict and I went to a meeting and then someone went and talked about me being there? That Mama, would, that's that guaranteed. Would make me, but that would make me feel like I don't want to go now because it doesn't feel safe. Boom! You're looking at me. That's how I feel because I know I know because I've heard it. Oh, guess who's showing up? Guess who's trying to get least- sober again? Like literally, chit chat, chit. Especially when there's gay folk, girl, gay folk gossiping, gossip hounds. Some of them not even sober. But people know you're I'm an not- addict. Are they really surprised if they see you? Of course not. But they, I don't. Well, I don't know. I don't know. It's not their. It's not their fucking business. And it's yeah. not. You know what I mean? So it has. I, I'll tell you that is my one regret. My one big regret is is going public with that on Drag Race. Huge mistake. Huge mistake. And I know that people have told me it helps them. That's great. I'd never set out to do that. I'm trying to help me. So it's very, very, very like, oh, I'm going to cry. This is like very like, oof. Well, we've also been places where people, even though they know, they it's love to offer diabolic. you drugs. Mama, and also there's this, oh, I don't know if I can say this. It, that's not, that's fine. But it's, it's when, it's a peculiar kind of dissonance when you are high and someone comes up to you and says, how sober are you? You saved my life. And I'm high out of my mind. That is so hard to deal with. And that's, nobody should have to deal with that. Because I can't, I'm like, whatever the case may be, I could have, it could be on day four of no sleeping at a gig where I have no business being at work because I am twack Tina. This is years ago, obviously, or whenever, it doesn't matter, nobody's business, right? But like, and people would like hug my, sweating, fucking twisted up meth addled body and say, you're such an inspiration. You kept me going. You keep me going. I'm so proud of you. And I'm literally fit, like almost dying. It's crazy. But (sighs) all this is because I admitted and said out loud that I'm an addict on television. And I wish I'd never done that. Not because, and because for me, and only for me, only for me, this, that public, public uh, knowledge does not offer me a layer of accountability that is any way helpful for me, for me. I know it does for other people, but that doesn't help me. It, it, for some people it might, I for, guess. It, it does. And I know some for, for whom it does. And they've stayed sober and they continue to be an inspiration. They want to be a role model and they are, and they're doing it fiercely. And I still like clap for them. I still don't think it's necessarily appropriate to do it on Facebook, but that's my opinion. It also seems like people might, people are more likely to not ask non-drinkers if they want alcohol, but it seems like people are very likely to ask Sweetie, I was drug offered users co- if they want drugs. I was offered cocaine four times in a row in a bar in Dallas. Yeah. After I said, oh, I don't do drugs. I'm sober. I think I really give <laughs> like, Pollyanna because nobody ever, ever asked me. But I mean, me. thanks for being generous, I suppose. <laughs> but, you know, work. but I'm not a known sober person. No one ever offers me drugs, ever. I've never, in drag, no one ever offers me drugs. Yeah. And I have no reason to not be offered because I'm not an addict. So it's weird that knowing you're sober, people ask you more than they ask me. 
I know it is. Strange. No one ever offers me cocaine. I think because well, well there's and a, they should. Yeah, just yeah, kidding. Yeah. Were you doing cocaine in my bathroom? <laughs> oh, no, I was cocaine selling cocaine, cocaine in your bathroom. <laughs> That's different. Yeah. I do not smoke crack. <laughs> I free base. <laughs> but I'm just saying it's interesting that people know I'm not an addict yeah. and never offer me drugs. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they know that you might not want to use drugs yeah. and they still offer you all the time, but which you is know crazy. What? At the end of the day, it's better. It's generous. They're not smacking me in the face. They're not saying that you're a cunt, you're a fat cunt, and I hated you on Drag Race. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, I'm able to, I'm able to just- Well, you get that at home. They- <laughs> My, my, my husband, Roger, my husband, Roger, Brandon, me, <laughs> yeah. anyone, Fina, anyone. <laughs> oh, there ain't no other way. And that's our holiday episode. Wait, wait, Isn't wait. that fun? Can I do it? Wait, can I do a song suggestion? Sure. Please, please, please. It's called, um, it's called, uh, um, it's called, I love crack cocaine, but no, no, no. Um, um, hold on one, one, one sec. Okay. So here's the thing. This is you, you'll understand this. Last night I was crying in bed after the, I know. <laughs> Tears, tears of love and joy, because I uh, this album dropped from this artist called Julia Zivert. Zivert, she's Russian, who has one of the most soulful, incredible voices ever. But just because she's born in Russia or she's Russian, she has to sing this horrible language. And Russian people know this. Girl, Russian ain't it when it comes to songwriting. Every Russian songwriter will tell you that. Constant clusters up the wazoo. Your constant she clusters, Ill. girl. She ill. She sucks. Like words that are hard to say, little and sing. Like, girl, fuck out of here. How about, ooh, there ain't no other way. Like, that's like rolls off the tongue. Not like, um, uh, well, you mammal. Well, get well, out of here. Well, even English isn't great because English has a lot of diphthongs, which is like diphthongs. Um, you know, you yes, know, I know about Whereas them like diphthongs. Italian, it's a lot of bright, clean vowels. Oh, yeah. You know, um, so, um pure vowels. Stava bien. Por un tiempo, volviendo a sonreír. The O's are O's. The A's are O's. Llorando por tu amor. I mean, Rebecca, um, what's her face doing? Llorando? Gayheart. Rebecca no, Gayheart. Rebecca, no, from the twin, Ferguson. The twinish, <laughs> in Dune Of Sunny Book Farms. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, estoy muy excited. And anyway, Spanish, Italian, mama, they, was, they slap. Air, um, Arabic even, probably. Long story short, Zivert released an album called uh, uh, which is like in a happy world, I believe. This one called Take It and Run. Mama, the, oh, this one called Love. It's called Love, and I need you to hear it. I need you to hear how she goes hard. You gotta I give it a it. listen. It reminds me of um, Dis- she got a Disney, Disney Jesse Ware. And she did a whole, it's a whole, it, every song rolls into another. It's a kind of a concept disco album, or what do you call the house or disco? House that sounds disco? like house to me. It's a house. Okay, I don't know shit about musical genres. Mama, she slapped the house down. And she is just, she has a soulful, big voice, but these, these consonant clusters, these like, um, she does this song called Nagatochia. And it's like, I, I want, her voice is caged in this horrible Russian language. Cause I heard her sing in English on her Instagram. And I was like, breakthrough, please oh, you break want through. That. I want it so bad. It'll never happen. It just, well, no, Americans are not going to sit down and no, be like Russian. No, pop, no, 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 no. But I, she just needs a hit in English. Please. If, she, if she'll break through. It could happen, but I don't we think it will. like to party. Something like that. We, no, it'd be like, no, she, it's a soul. She could be like, um, almost like, um, like Jesse Ware or, um, Dua, Dua Peep. Yeah. With a voice she's, though. It's like a Dula Peep. Yeah. Bop, that part. Dula Peep with a side of Adele with a little bit of Badu. Oh God. That's tell you what it is by Shermanology and eats everything. Yeah. L- love Shermanology. Drop the Venmo sis where I tip. Love <laughs> them. You know, artists like that too, you love them and the, the, you sharing them really does help. You them. know, I know because she's just so they did the the famously uh, Vicerni Urgant, which sounds crazy. It's like it's like uh, Jimmy Kimmel. They did a whole Italian show, so they did all Russian Italian versions of the Russian hits, and all they slapped Mary. They slapped better than the originals. Wow. They slapped better than the originals. One of those songs made me cry because it was so gorgeous. The, I went back to the original, made me fall asleep, honey. Bring a book, bring a book. But the Italian version. Bellissimo. So. It's a great song. Yeah, it's beautiful. Great album. So it's called Vmiri uh, Vistolik, but it's Z I V E R T in English. You can find her Zivert. She's a cool voice. I hope she breaks through too. She's beautiful. We're sending voice. you prayers, girl. Julia, she's not sick. No, no, yeah. she's, she's dead. She died. Yeah. She Well, she died. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. Succeed, ho. Maladietz. I think that's it, right? Okay, peace out, y'all. All right, bye. <laughs> Thank you.